Hi everyone, so we're going to try something a bit different this week. As we go into design patterns, rather than having one large video that goes over a bunch of design patterns and talks about the concepts, we're going to try to be modular with each of, with each of these videos. Each of them will can cover particular types of design patterns, and they will be very narrowly focused, and hopefully, therefore, each video will be more bite-sized. I'm actually very interested to hear if you like this idea, if it works. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into talking about what we mean by design patterns. So here we're going to be talking about software design patterns. And, and we've been using this term pattern. We've also been using this term framework. Are they the same thing? No. So a framework is something like Django. Uh, in Python, which you've been working with this term, or Swing, which you worked with in 2110. Um, frameworks are partially completed designs that you then add to to solve a problem. So like the J button is implemented when you're talking about Java Swing. You, know, you don't implement your own J button. You just use this thing out of the box and, and plug it in to whatever parts of uh, your program that you need. A pattern is not a framework. A pattern is uh, first a description of a problem, and then uh, it is an outline of a solution to that problem. And this term uh, really gained popularity in 1995 uh, with the book Design Patterns, Elements of Reusable Object-Oriented Software. Uh, you often hear hear the term gang of four if you get into the software design world it's referring explicitly to these four people who wrote uh this book and it it's widely kind of where a lot of popularity design patterns really started to grow and the idea of this is similar to you know a design pattern is similar when discussing things to the idea of a suspension bridge. A suspension bridge is not like, oh, here's this bridge that we pull out of the box and put it over this gap and, and there it goes. The suspension bridge is the idea of how you build the bridge. It's not a partially completed bridge. You know, when you're building a bridge, you start with the idea of if I want a suspension bridge, uh, one, is, is a suspension bridge a good idea? Two, uh, how should I build the suspension bridge for this particular gap that I am bridging, right? It's, it's the idea of the solution. And a design pattern as it relates to software is the same thing. It is a, we give it a name to identify it, and it describes a proven solution to a particular design problem. When we say proven, we mean it's been tried and tested, and it worked, and we're, we're happy with that. Uh, and so... Let me adjust my mic a bit. It seems to be redlining a little. I, I certainly don't want to blow out anyone's eardrums. Uh, there we go. Okay. And so generally these patterns, although not always, generally they are object-oriented. They use things like interfaces, abstract classes, visibility, so like public-private. Um, not always, but generally. But they are language-independent. So... Uh, a lot of the videos, I'm going to show you Java code. And the reason I picked Java code over Python or maybe C++ or, or any other language you might know is because Java tends to be very good when it comes to making uh, inheritance structures and data types very, very explicit and clear. Uh, and so for the purpose of illustrating design patterns, I think it's better than Python, where Python lets you play a bit fast, more fast and loose with data types. Uh, but that said, these patterns that I will show you in Java are not restricted to Java. Uh, that's very important. But it's it's a good way to say, uh, to, to create an understandable solution for other developers to maintain. If I say this class is maintained by a factory method and the other developer knows what a factory method pattern is, they're going to have an easier time maintaining it. It, it serves as a form of communication. A design pattern is not reusable code. I can't say, here's a bunch of code that you can use, go. Um, it's not a library. It is not something that's going to require a complex implementation, because if it requires a complex implementation, then it's kind of defeating the point of the design pattern of trying to have a simple, uh, repeatable idea of an implementation. I don't want to say repeatable implementation, but the uh, repeatable idea of an implementation. Again, like a suspension bridge. It is not always the best solution for a given situation. Um, 
You should only apply it when it's useful and when it's apropos. It's you shouldn't just it's it, when we say it's not simply a good thing to do. What we mean is you shouldn't just use design patterns to use design patterns. Batman has a grappling hook, right? He uses the grappling hook when he needs to climb buildings, which is a reasonable use of a grappling hook, right? That's that's something you'd use a grappling hook for. Batman does not use a grappling hook to open doors or make a sandwich because it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a useful solution there. Trying to shoehorn in design patterns would be like Batman trying to make a sandwich with a grappling hook. There's your quote to take with you for this lecture. Uh, another quote to take with you. Patterns are half-baked ideas, uh, meaning that you always have to finish them yourself and adapt them to your own environment. The pattern is an idea. It is not an out-of-the-box solution. It is not a model airplane kit. It is a description of what a model airplane kit should be built, or how a model airplane kit should be built. Um, you know, good ideas, rules of thumb to engage with. It is not like, here's all the pieces, put them together. And so we're going to talk about three categories of design patterns. This is where we get into uh, having a bunch of small short videos rather than one long video. Uh, each of these patterns is going to, each of these pattern types is going to be covered in their own video. We have creational. We have structural and we have behavioral. And each of these, uh, we break them down into this taxonomy because we're trying to, um, we're trying to n describe broadly when you would look for these types of design patterns. For example, with creational design patterns, we're talking about handling and often abstracting out the process by which objects are created or instantiated within our software. Um, and, and we'll get into why we might want to do that uh, in that video. With structural, we're talking about we need to combine multiple classes sometimes to perform some tests. And the reason that we're combining them is because it can actually add simplicity to our program. We'll look at some examples uh, in class on that video. And then finally, behavioral, it's talking about how classes interact or how a particular behavior occurs. I hate to use the word behavior behavior in behavioral, but it is an apropos description. And it can describe how we organize certain related actions. So we'll look at uh, behavioral patterns in their own video as well. Just quickly, we are there's more design patterns than we can cover in this class. I mean, this is not an exhaustive list remotely. And, and these design patterns are not something that, you know, came down from the heaven and there are exactly 34, right? Because someone can make their own and then there's 35 or 36 and, and so on and so on. So there's not a fixed number of patterns and we certainly can't cover them all. But... If you come across an interesting design problem, what we want you to do after this lecture is, sure, know a couple of, of design patterns, like know singleton and when it's apropos, know adapter and when it's apropos. But if you come across an interesting design problem, look up and see if there are any design patterns that are useful. That is to say, someone created an interesting solution to a related problem, can you apply that same solution to your own problem? That's the real goal we're going for. And so with that, I'm going to have three separate videos. We're going to look in the first video at Singleton and Factory. The second video, we're going to look at actually drop down to Behavioral and look at Observer, Visitor, and Strategy. And you've actually, by the way, seen the Strategy and Visitor pattern before. You may not be aware of it, but you definitely have. And then the last one we'll look at is structural. And we're going to look at the adapter and the decorator. There are, again, many more, but those are the ones we're going to look at. So with that, I hope you enjoy the next few videos, and I will see you when the next video is up. Bye now.